Hey everyone, John here, and I'm doing another Embroidery Medic installment. In this one, I've been provided a EMB file from one of our Facebook group members, and they digitized this cute design, and I'm not sure whether it was done with the auto-digitizing features or if they manually tried to tackle it. Regardless, they weren't 100% happy with the results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this in the native file format, see if I can make some changes, tweak some things, and add a little bit of dimension and stitch quality to the design. Now if you enjoy these videos, make sure that you hit that bell so you'll be notified every time that we release a new video, and make sure you subscribe, we really appreciate it. Now the first thing that should be noted is that the person who digitized this design used the artwork for learning purposes. They did not purchase a commercial license or are going to sell this design. They were just taking artwork and learning how to digitize at the time that they did this. And in the same way, I am just showing this as an example, the stitch file that they created, and we are not going to resell this design either. So I want to make that clear because we do have to be very careful about what artwork we use and when it's being used and for what purposes. Now, with regards to this design, I am going to do a quick little redraw to sort of see how it was created. I can see in the objects list that there is uh, smaller objects that are done first, they did the eye and then the inside of the eye and then it looks like the body's broken up into four pieces and then we have the, the brown around the outside and then some of the detail for the eyebrow, the nose and the outline around the, the actual ear is done in black as well. And I see the stitch types are pretty much all fills. I think there might be one satin stitch up here around the uh, eyebrow and I'll probably change some of those directions because it does look a little bit funny. But if I go to the uh, replay and I just quickly go through, I can see the sewing order. Now when it's doing this black first, I probably won't do that because I like to digitize the larger objects first. And with the black, the inside with the white in there, I probably won't carve a hole because in reality that's just a small little eye. We're seeing this blown up at like 427% larger than the original size. Then I do notice that it does one of the legs first. Then it does the other leg, which is giving me a jump between, so that's an unnecessary jump, and then it does the body, and that would kind of make sense other than the fact that the stitches are all going the same direction. So it really doesn't matter whether I do those two legs independently and then the body because it's all going the same stitch direction and you won't see any real difference in the design. Then I'm looking at the top piece here and it is a straight fill and it's being done and I'm going to probably do some outlining of these objects. I'm going to try to uh, keep the stitch count under control, but I'm going to outline them so we get a cleaner look. I'm going to change some of the underlay. I'm going to change some of the uh, stitch, uh, I guess not types, but I'll change some of the fills to a different pattern to add a little bit of texture. And I'll just go in here and try to clean up this design as a whole. So when I look at it and I'm going to outline the body and I'm going to outline the dark brown for that little hair on the top of the hedgehog, I will have some decisions to make on how I'm going to outline these objects so that they will dimensionally keep the look that I'm going for. So this is going to be fast and furious. There's no other way to get this one done. Uh, I'll just try to go through each of the steps. I'm going to be, uh, I guess, readjusting and resequencing all of the colors. I'm going to be changing things. I'm going to be adjusting stitch directions, underlay, all of that. So you might want to put me on slow speed for some of it. And uh, where you, you know, need to, you can speed things up. That's one thing I love about watching this on YouTube. You can slow things down or speed them up so you get the most out of this lesson. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just quickly go through some of these objects here where I can see if I uh, look at them independently. I'm going to get rid of some of the holes that I see carved out. So I selected that one and I'm going to hit that H and it's going to give me those objects. And I'm just going to get rid of all of the holes inside of that black. And I don't mind the stitch direction on that. Uh, I'm going to also come in here and I'm going to look at that stitch and I'm going to change the stitch direction, the angle, because I don't like stitch directions to go in the same direction. And I probably could change that to a satin stitch because it really is under the seven millimeters and it's not going to split. So that's going to actually give me a better look and less stitches. Sometimes carving out holes in little areas will actually do more harm than good. 
Now if I also choose the other black pieces here, and let's turn off the true view again, and I'm going to zoom into this just so you can see it. This actually right now is a fill stitch, and it has a single direction, but I, what I want to do is I'm going to actually grab this, and I'm going to make this a little bit wider overall, because it is really too thin in that area, and it's too thin here as well, so let's just make that a little bit thicker, and then I'm going to go to my edit objects, and I'm going to add in stitch angles. So I'm going to add a stitch angle here, here, and here. So three stitch angles, hit the enter, and now I can see that that is a satin stitch, I believe. So it is a satin, and now it's changing direction. So if I look at it now, it definitely is a cleaner looking stitch, and it actually doesn't sink into the same direction. Here is the before, here is the after. So that does look much better. Now I'm also going to go over to this object here because I can see that it is also a fill stitch going around and they're outlining that ear. But I'm going to do the same thing. Let's change that to a satin stitch and then let's go Well, it is selected. We'll turn off our true view so we can see the highlighted area and I'm going to add stitch directions as well. And I'm just going to add four of them so I have my four stitch directions that are turning this around and that way I have a nice satin stitch outlining that as well. Let's look at the underlay here. I don't need a zigzag. I just need to have a center run that'll get rid of a couple of stitches, make it look a little bit better. And if I look at that fill direction, let's change that direction so it opposes a little bit more on that pink. So there we go there. And then if I go here and call this up, Right now I have this uh, nose right here and we can leave that as a fill. I might go in actually to a couple of these. Let's grab that one as well. Actually I gotta do that independently. I don't want to do it like that. But I don't need an edge run. So I'm going to take off the edge run and I'm going to just turn on a tatami. And if I look at the spacing I can have that at four millimeters. I don't need quite as much spacing in there. And the reason why I turned off the edge run is I'm going to take that and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to actually turn that into an outline and I'm going to choose a satin stitch and I'm going to do a satin stitch outline that is going to be about 1.5 millimeters and if I look here it did some wonky things so I need to zoom into this so I can see what happened there and that is if I hit the H key because there is a bunch of stitches that really shouldn't be there so I'm just going to get rid of some of these and that actually clean that up and let's look at it it actually looks good there here is the before one and two did some funny stuff and just by m removing a couple of nodes that actually looks much better and if I wanted to get picky about it I could come in here let's turn on the true view hit the H key I could add some pull, extra pull compensation in those areas and remove the uh, push on that side so there's pull and then let's take the push and move it here. That's a very funny stitch right there. So let's get rid of that one. Move that one over, move this one down and just adjusting things ever so slightly. This is probably overkill, but that's just kind of the way I roll. I, I like to go into detail on these. Now I'm still gonna go in obviously and change some of the uh, order of these objects, but I'm just cleaning them up as I kind of see them. And I'll probably go in here to this eye as well. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm going to have that as a outline and I'm going to take that outline, use that and let's change that one to, let's do 1.5, it's going to be a pretty small stitch, I'm going to go to my stitch effects as well, center run is good, but there I have that and let's just zoom in ever so slightly just so I can see it here, let's zoom in like this, I don't want the eye to be overly big, so if I turn on the true view I can actually select that object that I just created and I can go into my outlines and I'm going to go into the offset so that it's on the inside right now. And because I did that, let's hit that H and I see that there's some other strange little things here. So let's get rid of those extra stitches. And then I need to take that fill, which is right here, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to adjust the push and pull compensation. Again, we have all those extra strange little stitches in there, so we'll get rid of those and adjust for that pull on the outside and push along the bottom. And I'm coming in here and this will keep the original shape intact, but now I have an outline and I'm going to grab that eye right now and I'm probably going to do something also a little bit strange to that eye. I'm just going to grab that eye right there and let's turn it off of reshape and go to resize. I'm going to make this 90% a little tiny bit smaller 
and let's move this just to the inside. So visually that's not going to change things very much but it gives a much nicer look to the design and let's grab that piece here and put it right underneath of that one and then we have that one going over top and I just want to make sure that it is going to be clear of the border around the outside. So there's all of that little detail done. Now I can start working on the body and then resequencing some of the order of these stitches so that it makes a little bit more sense. So if I look at this, I have three pieces and if I show all three pieces and I'll show you how there's one leg underneath, there's another leg right here and there's a third one. I'm not going to worry about doing it that way because all the stitch directions were going in the same direction. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to uh, my remove overlaps and actually let's weld it together. So I'm going to weld it together and now it's one piece so it's all welded as one piece. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to duplicate this so it's going to duplicate that design and then I'm going to take that duplicated piece and I'm going to go to my outlines and I'm going to go back to my stitch and I'm going to go back to 1.5 and that's going to give me a satin stitch around the outside and if I start to zoom into this and I look here I'm going to see that if I select that with the H and if I use my knife tool I can start to cut this into pieces so there's a piece right there and if I look at this one here, let's go back to that H, and uh, that's the wrong one. Let's choose this one right here, and I'm going to come in here now, hit that knife tool again, and let's just cut this one right over here and delete and hit that one enter. So now I can see that I have a piece there that I can just get rid of. I'm going to delete it, and if you look at it here now, it is deleted. And if I go back to my view and I look at the rest of the objects, I need to make a couple of more cuts if I want to do this the way I planned, which is grabbing this object right here, grabbing that same knife tool, and let's do one cut over here, and then let's grab that object again. And over here, I'm going to come right over to here, hit that H key, grab that knife tool, and I'm going to make sure that I cut this one right over here like this. So it's going to come over here and enter. And now I have that piece going right across the top and let's look at this full screen. So I bring this back in and I look at this object now and I can see how it is going across from one piece to the other. Now this is where I'm going to start to resequence a couple of things. I'm going to grab this object and put it first in the sewing order. So there is number one. Now this is going to be my, and actually let's change some of the, the variables in there as well. Because it now has an outline, I'm going to take off the underlay. I no longer need an edge run, but I just need to have a tatami. So I'm going to have the tatami and I'm going to change the spacing value to four millimeters because it doesn't need to be that much. It's going to reduce the stitch count ever so slightly. If I look at that fill and I look at the different fill types, the number one fill is the default and it kind of has a smooth texture and that's okay. I'm all right with that. I'm going to keep that stitch direction pretty much the same as well. I'm okay with the stitch direction uh, because it should be just fine. I'm not really going to mess with the push and pull too much because that 1.5 millimeter border around the outside should catch everything just fine. So I think we're all good there. Now if I look at this object here, this is going to be the next one in the sewing order, but now I'm going to come right over here and let's take this one and bring this one right up to this point right here and let's bring this one to this point right here. So it's going to do the first two fills and then it's going to come back and do this one and I'm going to add a little connection between here afterwards. I could probably do that now uh, and actually let's do this one. Let's see right here. I'm going to move this one first. So if I look at where that is, it starts here and it stops there. That is perfect. I'm going to zoom into that nose right now and I'm going to choose my digitizing tools and let's choose a digitize open shape and I'm going to start right over here, right there and I'm going to follow on the inside of that object and connect it to the next object. 
And if I take that now and I turn that into the same color, which I think is this color right here, there's all kinds of colors. Keep in mind I did not digitize this file, so I'm just working with something that is actually uh, done already. And where is that? Okay, that needs to be changed as well. I want to change that one back to black. And I'm going to take this one and move this into the sewing order in between those two. So now if I look at this, I have my first object which has a start and a stop. Then I'm going to tap to my next object which I want to start here and stop here. And then my next object starts and stops. So I have a sewing order which will continue to sew that entire color uh, after it does the two fills. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to duplicate this one as well. So there it is duplicated. I'm going to do the same thing. Let's do an outline. We're going to change that to a satin stitch. We're going to take that satin stitch, change it to 1.5, hit that enter button. There I have my outline. I see a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to have to fix here, but before we do that, let's zoom into this area here and start to use that magical knife tool to start cutting away at this. So here's my knife. I'm going to cut right here and hit the enter and then let's zoom back out and I'm going to cut right over here where I want it to enter so we're going to basically get rid of this piece that's going to go over top so let's zoom into this side and hit that knife tool again and this one here I will want it to let's say cut right here and hit that enter like that so now I have two objects I'm going to get rid of this one let's go to full screen turn on the true view and just to give you an idea, here is the before. So undo that, and there we got rid of that little piece. And now I'm going to take that one, and I'm going to put it underneath in the sewing order right here. And so it's going to do this one, then this one. Now here I can zoom in, and I can start to edit some of these objects. That might be zoomed in a little bit too much. So let's zoom out a little bit, just so I can see it. And I'm going to grab this object right here. Let's hit that H key and let's move this one so that it goes right underneath to there that looks nice and clean then we're going to go over to these objects here and I'm just going to go in and start to tweak some of these a little bit let's turn that one into a straight let's get rid of one of these because we don't need it so I can delete that one gives me a nice clean line and actually I probably to be honest could make these curves so that they start to curve and look a little bit cleaner as well do a curve here. This is where going into this node edit, I can go into individual nodes and I can clean things up and make them nice and clean as they go through. So I'm just coming in and changing some of these nodes so that I create nice smooth lines as opposed to having those sharp angles being created. It's uh, going to take me a couple minutes to do this, but it's going to be well worth the effort and make everything look nice and clean. Let's go into out of true view, that should be fine. Sometimes I need to see what's underneath, so I need to turn off that true view, and that looks pretty good right there. Let's just move this one here, so we retain that original shape a little bit better, and we are almost done. We need to change this one, we need to change this one, and we could get, actually I don't mind that, let's keep that nice and clean. Turn that one, turn that one, and this one here we will turn that one so I'm changing from straight to curved nodes curve curve and we'll keep this one curved as well and now when I get to this point I can just straighten this one out ever so slightly and that should look awesome so if I look at that it looks nice and clean I just have to make sure that I adjust this one here so that it's more underneath. So I can hit that H key. I'm going to put it underneath so that it falls completely underneath of that nose. And then let's hit the next one. Make sure that we are at closest point there. Right over here. That way I know that it's going to not trim. And let's go back to my previous view. And I don't like that point. I'm going to round that little edge right there. That one looks good. I'm just kind of visually going through this design, making sure that everything looks nice and clean. And I see something that I did wrong somewhere, but I'll fix that as well. So let's go here, let's go right here. Let's hit that H key, and this one I'm going to bring down, turn to a curve, turn that to a curve. That looks a little bit cleaner. 
and this could be cleaned up a little bit too this one here there's an extra node right there don't need that one so I'm just looking at how this was done and this is a good indication as to you know the difference between doing something I guess uh, manually and auto you just get better cleaner results and it'll give you a nicer look overall so I do see this here let's get rid of that see what happens actually I want to get rid of the whole thing not just the one piece there we go that's back to the original okay so here we have changed a bunch of stuff I've changed the fills actually I didn't change this fill let's change this one this is where I'm going to go back into my fill settings I'm going to come in here and choose a random fill I'm gonna go real random let's just do like number I don't know let's try 59 and see how it looks that actually looks pretty cool I think that's gonna be good I have a piece here a piece here now I'm just gonna check the sewing order there is my fill there's my second piece then it does this piece in the outline I could save myself a color change just by moving that color to there and let's actually look at this one I have no choice but to do that color last so there is going to be one at the very end so this is where we are going to do this piece then it's going to do the fill inside the eye then the fill outside then the white in the center then it will do all the pink it's going to outline the nose do the ear and at the very end it's going to outline that piece right there I think we are done that was crazy quick but I think it's going to give us a really nice uh, look to it when it's done I'm going to look at the stitch count and I have 13,000 stitches I know I added a couple thousand stitches to the design but it is going to look a little bit more dimensional a little bit better and it's not going to be bulletproof by any means and I think we'll be happy with the results I just need to make sure that I look at all of the uh, underlays for those satins and edge run is fine I do not need a zigzag here I want to do the same thing I do not need a zigzag just an edge run is fine this one will be the same thing here no zigzag is necessary check the other satins that one's okay uh, let's see here that is the original so I do not want that I want this one and uh, center run is fine there center run is fine there and that's a center run as well because they are small so we are done let's take this uh, to the machine let's run a sample and we will compare the results for both of them The design ran smoothly and once again the proof is in the stitching. We added 3,000 stitches and with the changes we made I think that the effects speak for themselves. Hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.